Rub up your engines! Manny V says, Scotty, help. My 2016 Mustang GT V8 manual feels clunky when I shift to second gear. When I rev it 3K in first gear and slide into second, the shifter grinds. All right. Well, here's the problem. They've had problems with those transmissions. From my information, I would have to have your VIN number and everything to actually figure it out, but a lot of those were made in China, and they were terrible transmissions, because I had a customer with her in 2016. She went through three standard transmissions, and when the last one they gave her under warranty broke, she gave them back the car and said, I don't want this thing. And it had the Chinese-made standard transmission. Yours is obviously starting to go out if it's grinding. That's just unfortunately, they didn't make them like they used to. It's sad, but true. Aaron Brick says, Scotty, I got an 03 LeSabre, 160,000 miles. The transmission is starting to go out. The car's so reliable, is it worth replacing the transmission? All right, if you really like the car, an 03 LeSabre doesn't have an extremely complex automatic transmissions. I would say, look what a factory remanufactured transmission goes for. And if you're willing to pay for that, do it. And it can easily go another 160,000 miles if you want to spend that kind of money. But don't go to one of these clowns that says, I can rebuild it for 800 dollars la 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 they'll never rebuild it correctly you want it done right and if you're willing to pay for a factory remanufactured transmission go ahead it could last quite some time strong engines and those things it was the transmission that was the weak point as you found out menopoula says scotty i'm buying a brand new car this year what do you recommend a 2020 or 2021 wrx subaru or the 2022 civic si it really depends on what you want if you really want screaming go ahead and get the wrx won't last nearly half as long as the honda the honda's gonna outlast it uh, the thing is the WRX rides a little bit better than the Civic does, but it all depends. And if you want the Civic's fun little zippy, the WRX is quite a bit faster, but the Civic's going to really outlast it. My advice is road test them both. And if you're nuts about the WRX and you don't care about getting something that's going to last three, 400,000 miles, go right ahead. But if you want long life, get the Honda. Vinar says, is it a good idea or bad to supercharge an FJ Cruiser? Well, it depends on what shape the engine is then. When you supercharge an engine, all you're doing is ramming more air into the engine. When you ram more air into the engine, that increases the pressure inside the combustion chamber, which strains the engine more. Higher pressure makes it wear out faster. Now, those are well-made engines. Those V6 Toyota engines, they can take a lot. That same engine and a modified version is in the fancy Lotus sports car. So they're very good engines. But if you got one with high mileage and you put a supercharger, don't be surprised if way down the road, you're going to have to rebuild the engine because you're going to wear it out. Drummond Kilt says, hey, one of my relatives looking for a new car was thinking of buying a 2014 Ford Fusion with 70,000 miles. Is it worth five grand? Well, the Fusions were one of the better cars that Ford built in 2014. Focuses were crap. A lot of them were crap. But the Fusion was a decent vehicle. If a guy like me checks it out and says, yes, it's in good shape, yeah. It's worth four or $5,000. It might last quite some time. If they can prove that's really 70,000 miles, and it isn't a lie, get the Carfax, see when it was inspected each year, and that the mileage went up and it matches 70,000 miles, because I've had people not do that, and then later you'll show them the report and say, look, you think you got 70,000 miles. The last year was inspected, it said 150, so, you know, that's a lot of baloney. If that's real, yeah, it could be a good car, but have a mechanic, check it out. Don't trust anybody buying a used car. Ricky Daniel Garcia says, Scotty, what's the best year for an El Camino? Oh, those cool little car station wagon trucks you know pretty solid built vehicles uh, the ones that everybody wants are the v8 especially with the big box they go for big money the ones with sixes you can pick up for nothing and the ones with the plain old 350 aren't all that expensive the year itself doesn't really matter the main thing is rust those are rust buckets now if you get one from arizona or texas and the frames solid it's not all rotted out go ahead and get one that's what you want is a non-rotted one because if you have one with a rotted frame it's worth nothing because the frames coming apart the body's rust and the car's a rolling pile of junk that's the main thing is whether it has rust or not because you can put different engines and transmissions in any one you want but you don't want to buy one that's a rusted hull because it's not worth fixing then Samuel Vu says Toyota Sienna 2017 for 30k or 2018 Pacifica Hybrid for 40k what's the better value well the Sienna is like a thousand times better it's going to last five or ten times longer than the Pacifica and the Pacifica is a hybrid and the hybrids cost a fortune as they age 
engine brake. A regular Toyota Sienna van can go four or 500,000 miles, pretty much trouble free if you maintain it. Don't even think about buying that Pacifica. Get the Sienna. Those things can run forever. My son has one with all of his kids. Are CVTs reliable? That depends. Who makes them and when were they made? You take later model CVTs. Both Honda and Toyota have CVT transmissions that now have launch gears. They have actual first gears that take off. And then once they're out of first gear, they go to the CVT transmission and then they use the drums to shift the rest of the way to get better gas mileage. My son's got a Corolla with one of those and he loves it. It's got an outstanding acceleration and phenomenal gas mileage. Those are great. But on the other hand, if you're looking at an older Nissan with a CVT and that crap the Jatco made, they're absolute piles of junk. So it depends on the year, make, and model of that. You got to do a lot of research if you're looking at CVT transmission. One size does not fit all. And there's actually, I don't know, 10, 12 or more different variants of CVT transmissions. They're not even all the same. They have different internal designs. Zammer223 says, Scotty, what do you think of newer Lincolns? They were always decent vehicles, but you know, Ford got away from making cars. The only one left they make is a Mustang. They gave up with the car business. They had solid frames on them. They were well-built cars for their day, and they got better gas mods as they got newer, where they had fancy computer-controlled V8s with fancy computer-controlled transmissions. Some of those things could get 25, 26 miles a gallon on the highway. Not in town, but on the highway. Chanticleer 2019 says, what are your thoughts on a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission? Okay, those are made in Germany, and those are fantastic transmissions. They're very complex. Uh, I don't think they aren't. They're all computer-controlled. One year, they sold, I think, three and a half million of those worldwide for other people to use in their vehicles. And they are really well built. It's a great engineering firm. They know what they're doing. And they're setting up to make transmissions for hybrid cars and fully electric cars. They're even working on that. They're a very good engineering firm and they make very good transmissions. But that said, if you have one and it's really old, two, three hundred thousand miles and it breaks, it's going to cost you a king's ransom to have it rebuilt correctly. They're very expensive, but they're really well made if they're taken care of. Dan Dabrowski says, Scotty, what's your opinion on an 87 Thunder? Thunderbird Turbo Coupe with 35,000 miles. All right. Well, you know, it was the late 80s Thunderbird Coupes that pretty much started the ruination of Thunderbird. They were cheaply made. Now, that's a turbocharged one. And if it's only really got 35,000 miles on it and it can be proven and you can get it cheap enough at some point in time, just because it's such an oddball thing, it might become somewhat of a collector's item. Now, it's never going to be a car that's worth $200,000, but if it's really got that mod and it's in decent shape. It could be a fun knock around toy. But don't ever think about buying a car that old, being a Ford, and expect it to be a daily driver. You'd get that as a weekend toy. Maybe you could have some fun, but don't overpay because they weren't that well built in those days. That was when Thunderbird started to go and then they came back later with that other Thunderbird that was an absolute pile of junk. They only made them for a few years. Now they don't make them at all. Kevin Montoya says, Scotty, I just bought a 93 Geo Prism with 14,000 miles for 3750 was it a good choice? Realize, you know, those are basically Toyota Corollas, and those engines and trannies can run forever. It's a 93 Geo Prism. I really doubt that it actually has 14,000 miles. I have had so many customers buy cars like that and say, oh, it's only got 15,000 or 40,000 miles on it, but it's, you know, 40 years old. I never believe any of that unless there's absolute bulletproof, unmitigatable, positive, it really only has 14,000 miles on it. I kind of doubt that that's real. I've never actually seen one like that with my personal eyes, and I've been working kind of cars for 53 years. But if it runs good, hey, they can last a really long time. And since it's basically a Toyota Corolla, you can still get any parts for it easily. Georgie Bergenkopf says, Scotty, is it safe to drive with a snap glow plug on a diesel? It's still stuck inside the engine. I'm assuming that the outside part broke and the inside's still screwed in. If the inside's still screwed in when it's running, it doesn't leak. You don't have pressure coming out going doo, 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 doo. totally safe to drive. Now, it's going to be harder to start because you got one less glow plug, but if you don't live in, you know, Siberia and it's not all that cold, it'll probably start with the other glow plugs working. It'll start and run. As long as it's not leaking anything out, you can drive it forever that way as long as it will start. And if push comes to shove every once in a while if it won't start, you can take the air filter out, spray a little start and fluid to start it. 
you can drive it that way forever as long as it's not leaking any pressure if you're curious when it's running you get a little dishwashing liquid pour it on the top if it doesn't bubble out you know there's no air escaping and there's nothing wrong with it Suk Deep Hera says I got no one Corolla the tires make a noise when they rotate like shoo 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 Canik says it needs front brakes what do you think that's an obvious thing they can make a noise and do that but learn how to do it yourself obviously you don't trust the mechanic watch my video how to replace brake pads on your car Scotty all you gotta do is take a wheel off look and you can see the brake pads new brake pads are about this thick once they're thinner than about a dime get a dime and there's only a dime left of the pad material before it gets to the metal backing go ahead and change them but if there's more than that left you can wait learn to do these things so people don't rip you off because people are always trying to sell people stuff that's just how our capitalist economy works if you can check it yourself even if you're not going to do the work you won't get ripped off so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell